Uh, it's a great, it's a great, there's a great, uh, I was going to ask a great question on forgiveness and forgiving too much. I think it's really good when you do forgiveness work and spiritual work to have a mentor or a group to support you so that you don't take spiritual ideas out of context and you have guidance around them. You know, like forgiveness doesn't mean like, it doesn't necessarily mean like to be a walkover or a dummy or, or something like that or, or uh, if, uh, if you see someone chopping someone down in the street, you just you just like uh, just like go up to them and say, "I forgive you," while they chop you to pieces or something. Like, I was just joking, but I mean, it's not a good joke. But 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 um, it's it's not it's not. But, but um, um, so so the thing of forg forgiveness, like if someone steals some money from me, is it, it's not the thing of like you know. I, well, yes, you know, to to work on forgiving them. But not necessarily be putting them, putting myself in a place where they're going to steal the money again. Uh, so, yeah. Um, my girlfriend's stolen money from me many, many occasions. It's, it's, it's not the stealing I can forgive. It's the lies about it. <laughs> it's the it's the cover up. <laughs> I can't cope with. Well, you see, the, the thing with, with forgiveness is, you know, we, for me, the purpose I use forgiveness for is to let go, so I can get a source of love and peace on the inside rather than needing to control somebody or have somebody be the source of, of love and peace on the outside, on a simplistic level. But so I, I'm on this quest for a harmonious relationship and I just see l lies is something that gets in the way. Well, you know, let the, you know, li well, you know, also for me, you know, as I you do spiritual work, one is, you know, I have spiritual mentors, I have spiritual groups which, which help me to discern what is an ego choice from what is a spiritual choice, mm. you know. So, one of the things is, when I was in strong active ego, I had a lot of repressed feelings and a lot of active addictions, the people I associated with tended to be on a, on a similar vibrational level. Mm. I attracted and connected with people in active addiction. I went into a career in the stock market where there was a lot of addicts, there was a lot of gambling, there was a lot of all kinds of addictions going on. So my whole circle of people were, were of that nature, that strong ego nature. So as I start to do spiritual work, you know, I have people who are spiritually more advanced than me and spiritual mentors, then I'm starting to disengage from the people, places, situations and careers that were very, very ego based. You know, in that, I was in a world where I was attracted to unconsciously, maybe not, not, not actively, but I was choosing all those dark options and so, as I forgive those, I start to, and I have my spiritual mentors and groups and spiritual teachings, I start to disengage in that. And there is, through inner wisdom or through the mentors or through the groups, you know, one is guided to, to start releasing, not just on, a, on an internal level, but also releasing the things which are choices that my ego has, has made before. So then I start to be more attracted to being, for example, more in spiritual groups, to associate more with spiritual people, and also to let go of those things which no longer resonate with me. So in the beginning, of course, it's difficult because one, one doesn't have the, the spiritual discernment, the spiritual, uh, the spiritual ability, hence the mentors of the groups will say, hey, you know, the, the, you know the, probably for your spiritual advancement, these situations or people, places and situations are no longer supporting your inner spiritual growth, so so they become released, and then um, like for you know before when I was in my active ego addictions, I'd be interested. I'll just take my food addiction, but this would also happen in relationships and careers as well. You know, when I'm in in inflated ego, I'll choose everything which is ego related. You know, from in an ego version, I'll choose eating places and eating in a manner which is ego related. I'll choose, um, I'll choose careers, which I unconsciously choose, which are ego-related. I'll choose, you know, relationships that I have with people, which are ego-related. So mm -hmm. they all had this thing of symbolic destruction, because I had all, you know, we we're talking about guilt earlier on in the group. All that, you know, when you have too much repressed guilt, because you're acting out on addictions, guilt, shame, uh, fear, all of these things create an unconscious attraction, you know, guilt symbolizes I need to punish myself, you know, or fear. So I, ch I choose 
punishing situations, fear-based situations, unconscious. And here's the thing with addiction, is you're attracted to that. The ego is unconsciously attracted to foods, uh, relationships, careers, which are destructive, and it actually wants them. Mm -hmm. And it's actually uh, repulsed initially by the things which would be good. Yeah. The other day, I polished off a whole cheesecake in a couple of hours, and uh, where's the ego in that? Of you know, what, 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 well, the, the ego... And I did feel guilty. <laughs> well, the, well, I felt, you know, I was sort of criticising myself for having no self-control and, you know, and eating the wrong things. And yeah, so, it's, you know, uh, you know, you know I, I'm a member of 12-step programmes, we'd say I'm powerless because unconsciously I, I just pick up without any defence against the cheesecakes and just eat them. And then the, the guilt and the self-attack comes in after that's quite normal. So it's like, you know, you do, you're attracted to something, you do it spontaneously, and then you feel guilty. But that, that repressed guilt is a, is a, is a yeah, what do you call it, when it's one of those things that gets worse and worse the more you do it, is a downward spiral. So, um, so that, that you're just being orchestrated by uh, your ego. You're in a field which is your ego is dominant, and it's just orchestrating things, and you're in that cycle of destruction. So... As you start to pursue, so that is an ego thing because when you, if, well, as you release those destructive mechanisms, you see, when you, you know, here's the thing, when I was in active addiction, really, whenever I'd do anything addictive, I'd feel good for a short period of time. That's why they were addictive. Because you know, if I didn't keep doing them, then, you know, because I was an addict, I would do them so regularly that I thought I had a way of controlling. My, the way I emotionally felt. So I could feel, to some extent, I, you know, the food and all my other addictions were like a drug that kept me feeling relatively good, you know, event, until they eventually stopped working and I was uh, facing death, yeah. To flesh this out a bit, I, I, I'm wanting to lose some weight. I, I, I'm heavier than I've ever been. And when I want to lose weight, and I see on the scales I've actually gained some weight, I, it's like I go to a place of despair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, I mean, I would recommend a group like something like Overeaters Anonymous, mm -hmm. where you get a lot of spiritual uh, buddies. There are other, other food-related ones. And you'd get something called a sponsor or a mentor who would be your guide to spiritually let go of the food. I mean, this particular group is not 100% geared just for food addiction, even though I am a member of a... 12-step fellowship and I'm 10 years abstinent. I used to be obese as a child, uh, so it, it definitely works uh, getting a mentor, yeah. Now, I'm right to trace this back to what I call uh, love starvation. I, mean, I, I feel so, so, so unloved. Uh... I agree, I agree. I mean, all addictions, you know, are the, egos, the ego searches for love on the outside through mm. controlling people, mm. places and situations mm. on the outside. So it's like the ego says, seek outside for love in whatever form, whether it's cakes, whether it's a member of the opposite sex, whether it's a career title. So seek outside and never find, you see. So when we surrender the ego, we let go of seeking love on the outside to find the love on the inside. So when you start to, like in a 12-step program with Overeaters Anonymous, uh, for example, or there's other 12-step food fellowships, or there's AA for Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, Cocaine Anonymous. Uh, so yeah, as you let that go and you work a spiritual program to release needing to control the world, then you find the love on the inside and then you no longer need. As I was saying earlier, once you have an access to a high vibration, a state of peace and love on the inside all the time, there is no, there is no desire or need to do these things to feel a bit better. So it, it disengages those mechanisms. Yeah. Might it be that I'm addicted to finding and telling the truth, and truth-telling doesn't go down very well in the modern world? Well, you know... I mean, you know, I mean I'm reminded of another quotation. Uh, isn't, it so, isn't it strange that honesty is supposed to be a virtue, and yet nobody wants to know the truth? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, you know, there's different, different ways of seeing the word honesty. You know, like... Um, so w when I'm... When I'm in my ego, what I see as honesty is coming from my ego. Uh, what, what does it mean? So, like, if I had an inflated ego and I, I sort of said, you know, I saw someone and said, I don't like the colour of your socks, 
you know, I don't like the colour of your socks, I don't like you because your socks are the wrong colour. So that's honesty, but I mean my ego, mm -hmm. you know. So, so I'll go around and saying, look, I don't like the colour of your jeans. You've got the wrong colour, so I don't like you. So I'm being honest, but that honesty is, is a level of, is coming from uh, the aspect of my ego. I, I seem to be going down le levels here. The yeah. next thing I want to say is uh, uh, to taboos bother me. You know, no taboos, no errors. Uh, I, I sort of feel, if it's the right word, that there are, there are certain conversations that need to be happening in the world. And, and you know, there's, there's sort of like social collu coll collusion and yeah. conspiracy to, to try and s stop those conversations from being had. And, this is this is bothering me for some reason. Okay, well, I mean, this this group would be less about changing the world and the collusions in the world, and in letting go of the world bothering me and what it's up to. So rather than uh, going to change the world, I, uh, this group is more about changing one's perceptions of what's wrong in the world. So uh, you know, you know. So and is it sort of work? The more I heal my work on my own healing, yes. The, my own healing sort of then radiates uh, a, a, a healing a healing effect. Out, yeah. Outwards. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. Yes. But you know, we just focus on letting go of what's disturbing me in the world, and that, I would agree with that. And then the healing radiates out by not needing to control the world, mm. as opposed to uh, seeing problems in the world and trying to control the world. That's not what this group's. About, and I don't believe the course of miracles. And another thought occurs to me of internal battles. You know, I mean, I, I'm very, you know, very conscious of battles between me and the world. But I mean, I think, you know, what occurs to me is, is, is there some kind of parallel process that sort of, you know, that there's, there's this conflict inside of me that's actually at the root of, well, things like my cancer. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, um, uh, we will be doing some processes very soon in the group. So my teacher, uh, Dr. David R. Hawkins, who was, all, who was also a Course in Miracles teacher, he let go of 23 illnesses, many of them life-threatening, mm -hmm. through doing many of the exercises in A Course in Miracles. Even though it's not, you know, and, and being inspired by that and believing I was given that information by grace, I did that and let go of major illnesses myself. So, but again, it's not so much about, um, it's letting go of the things in me that I'm disturbed about or that I want to change. Yeah, what, what's occurring to me is that if I'm hating things that are out there, what's out there is also inside of me. Yes, you sort right. of, I'm, I'm sort yeah. of yeah. Hate, hating what's inside That's right, that's me. right. So we need to let go, yeah. holographically, as you let go of the outside, you also let go of the conflict on the inside mm. and then you access the, the healing power within. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those great, uh, those great